I am Sister Joanna Kristner, three years in the Carmelite convent. That apart, I am from the Ukraine. Sister Anastasia of the Life Giving Cross. I am from Slovakia. I entered the Carmelite convent in 2004. My name is Sister Teresa of Christ Emmanuel and the Holy Countenance. I entered the Carmelite convent 57 years ago. My name is Maria Elizabeth of the Most Holy Trinity. I was born in Slovakia. God called me three years ago. My name is Veronica of Christ the King and His Most Holy Countenance. I am from Slovakia. I entered the Carmelite convent ten years ago. I am Sister Teresa of Saint Joseph. I've been a Carmelite for 69 years. Sister Maria Teresa of the Most Holy Eucharist. I've been a Carmelite for 19 years. I was born in Bulgaria. The Carmel of the Holy Spirit was founded on May the 24th, 1935, at the request and insistence of the former Catholic Bishop of the Eastern Rite, Bishop Kirill Kurtev, together with Archbishop Roncalli. It was indeed an innovative initiative, the first Carmelite convent of the Eastern Rite. It was set up with a clear intention that the sisters should pray for the unity of the churches. The Carmel in Sofia, founded by sisters from Constantinople, was the first Carmel of the Eastern Rite anywhere in the world. The sisters soon took up residence at the former home of Archbishop Roncalli, the Pope's legate in Bulgaria, and later Pope John XXIII. After the Second World War and the coming to power of the Communists, all Carmelites of foreign origin were forced to leave Bulgaria, and in 1952, sisters of Bulgarian origin were also thrown out of the convent. I made my pledge, in other words, I took my final vows, in 1952, precisely on July 16th, the day Bishop Vasilkov, three Assumptionists and many, nearly all our priests, were arrested. We were arrested exactly on St. Ivan Rilski's feast day, October 19th, 1952. It was still morning when they came, and they didn't even wait for us to open the door. They demolished it, entered and said, they have pistols, you're under arrest. In addition, they immediately separated us, one from the other. Some of them, Sister Boisena and one other sister, were in Belena, in a work camp. The remaining sisters were all persecuted and had court cases brought against them. Some were imprisoned for 40, 50 days. It varied. Voyons. 
One day an investigator told me, what bad things did you do that you have to go to confession? You lived in seclusion, with no contact with the outside world. What sin could you have committed that you have to go to confession? I answered, one does not always commit big sins. Sometimes one doesn't live by the rule. For example, one doesn't observe the silence rule or such minor things. He replied, oh yes, therefore you could say that you always abide by the rule, that you never violate it. Can you say that you have always been obedient to the rule? It was then that I felt that something was invading my conscience, a feeling of guilt, a feeling of sadness, because who can say about themselves that they have always behaved beyond reproach? I instinctively looked up at him and saw his terrible, penetrating gaze. I felt as if something had broken into me. Then I immediately calmed down and said, that is not your business. At that moment, I felt that he had lost his influence over me. It was, nonetheless, a startling experience. I understood how they were able to creep into people's consciences. That was how they were able to impose whatever they wanted in order to provoke a feeling of guilt, even though the person was innocent. We were very frightened, very, as women. Will they behave honorably towards us? That made matters worse. Some of our sisters, for example, Sister Boisena and Sister of the Incarnation, were put in a cell with other women. I was the only one to be left alone. And if you take into account the fact that I wasn't interrogated for 10 days, you can begin to imagine the continuous worry and uncertainty that I went through. They finally began interrogating me, always at night. Exactly the moment one was preparing to turn in for the night, they would bang the iron door that undoubtedly weighed a ton. They would bang the door and say, Get up! You are not going to turn in for the night. I would be led, with one militia man in front and one behind, along various staircases and endless corridors, up and down the higher floors. The hours were long, and the questions always the same. Why are you here? What have you done? I would answer, you tell me. I have done nothing wrong, committed no crime against the state, or the people, or against my conscience. You tell me why you have brought me here. We had no rosaries, so I made one from bread, in the shape of a ring. From yet another little piece of bread, I made a small figurine and said to myself that this was Our Lady. I took her with me to the interrogation, seeking help from her presence. I would hold her tightly in my hand, in readiness to pray for help in case of need. My interrogator noticed that I had something in my hand and said, Open your hand. When I did so, he said, Open both your hands. He saw that I had something. What is it? I answered, A small figurine. Let me have it. Do you know what he then said? Does this give you strength? He felt a power that he wanted to discover. He took it from me and placed it on the table. He felt the grace that flowed from it. They later released me, threatening that I must renounce the cloth because I had been arrested in a habit.